Welcome back to the 76 U.S. Women's Open Media Center. We are joined by 2010 U.S. Open champion Paula Creamer. Paula, um, just talk about being here in San Francisco at Olympic Club for a U.S. Open. Yeah, it's, um, it's great to be back home. I uh, haven't been back for quite a while, and my first stop was Togo's. It's like my favorite <laughs> sandwich place in the world, and went straight there um, from the airport, and it's... Uh, it's just nice to be back in the Bay Area, and this golf course is in spectacular shape, and makes it even better when you come in for a, you know, your national championship to be at such a, you know, prestigious golf club. Talk a little bit about the course, how it's playing, and how it suits your game. Um, well, the. The course superintendent and the staff and everybody has done such a spectacular job. I mean, it really is a great test of golf. It challenges every part of your game, and that's what you want in a championship. And uh, it's been fun. I mean, with the par three and, you know, last night with the Taste of San Francisco, I mean, it's kind of weird. It doesn't really feel like a U.S. Open yet. I mean, the golf course definitely does. But all these fun activities, it just – it. it uh, it's been it's been really nice. Um, you know, it's be, it's been great to to actually see a, you know the Olympic Club take a you know ownership of all of us, which is cool. Ron. So in and out after Togo's or just Togo's? I haven't gone in and out. It's just Togo. <laughs> Togo's is. I mean, it's been a while for Togo's. So. <laughs> uh, um, we talked to you obviously when you got the exemption about coming back home, mm-hmm. but now that you're here, how does that change the dynamics? Was there any sort of moment when you thought? wow, I'm really back in the Bay Area for the Women's Open? Um, You know, I guess getting on the airplane, you know, normally I don't come out that early, but I came out on Saturday, and uh, that doesn't normally happen. You'll get to a tournament that far in advance, and uh, this time I did, and I played on Sunday, and, uh, you know, I – Anytime you walk, or I guess you say drive your car into where the U.S. Open is, there's just a special feeling of, and a vibe. And the fact that it is, you know, here in the Bay Area, um, it, it was special. Um, but, you know, at the same time, I'm here to play a golf tournament, too. And, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I feel really good. I, I love the golf course, so I'm, I'm excited for it to start. If, if I can just quick follow, how much history do you have at this course? Um, I mean, you know, I live in the East Bay. You grew mm-hmm. up in the East Bay. You don't always get to San Francisco right. much. How much have you played here before? You know, I've only played here once, and that was at Christy Kerr's event, um, I believe, in 2017. And I came out to watch, um, you know, the men's uh, you, uh, the Open in 98. But, I mean, at that time I was, you know, 12, 11 years old. It wasn't like my dad was going to say, let's go play Olympic Club. <laughs> you know, that just, that wasn't going to happen. Um, so, quite truthfully, I really don't have that much history here. Um, it was always something I would want to do, but at that age, I, I never got the, you know, the opportunity. Uh, Paula, some people say there's a unique flavor to San Francisco style golf, whether it's the weather, the quirky courses mm-hmm. or, or whatever. Do you agree with that? And if so, how does this course from what you've seen so far kind of exemplify? Oh, for sure. I mean, when you're standing on the driving range, it's 15 degrees cooler than when you're over, you know, standing on 15 green or whatever. But uh, it is. The ball doesn't fly as far. You know, there's mist that comes in. Um, You know, it's awesome to see the fog kind of roll through the trees. You don't get that everywhere you go. That's definitely a San Fran trait. Um, And just the the trees and, the you know, the architecture, the landscaping, all of that, uh, it's very, you know, to San Francisco, it's very specific with that. Um, But the golf, I mean, the grass is is perfect. You know the greens are awesome. The rough is thick, um, and that's you know has a lot to do with the weather here as well. Thank you for the poetry. <laughs> oh, poetry. Hey, Paula, what impact do you think it has um, on women's golf that the 11 or 12 year old girl following you guys this week will never know that she can't play Oakmont, you know Pebble? Olympic Club that none of these courses are all these courses are available to her I'm sorry can you what what impact does it have on the women's game broadly that unlike you the 11 12 year old today knows they that the they are going to okay. be able to play these iconic courses I, I'm sure at 11 you never thought you were going to win a U.S. Open <laughs> no I was Oakmont. playing nine hole you know NCGA tournaments that's what, <laughs> yeah. and I was ready for them pulling my pole card around um <laughs> you know it's it is 
it's actually great to see that there is that opportunity and how far along golf has been growing. And, you know, there are so many great golf courses in the Bay Area. Um, I mean, I know obviously we're surrounded with the four here in, in the San Fran area, but just even when you go where I'm from, Castlewood, you know, down the street, there's five or six that are awesome golf courses there. And, uh, you know, it, it shows that clubs are, you know, bringing younger kids in and they're allowing junior golf to grow. Um, because without that, you know, who's going to play on the LPGA and PGA Tour? You know, you have to be able to to be able to open the doors for young kids and uh, you know getting on those harder golf courses and those prestigious golf courses is difficult but these days when you've got some talent I mean you can get out there and, and be able to do that. Paula I would never suggest that what you did was ever easy but you made it look easy at one point in your career now that you have a little more perspective and have had to battle through some injuries mm -hmm. how has your perspective changed about the game and what it takes to win an open no i it's it's funny you say that because you know this is my 10th year you know since winning the u.s open or 11th or going on but it, it's i look at my career and I, I would say to myself, if I was younger then, to en enjoy those wins more. You know, I was just so focused all the time. You went on a Sunday and it was like, the next tournament starts Monday, you know, and never ever really sat there and, you know, patted yourself on the back. And uh, going through injuries and, and all of that, it's, it's tough. And you never know if you're going to be able to play again the same. Um, you know, I feel the best I've felt in probably six years, quite truthfully, and uh, that's saying a lot. And it's nice to be actually be able to come out and play a golf course and not have to hurry home and ice and do rehab and all of this, you know, to my body. I can actually go practice again if I want. Um, but I do, I do think that my career, you know, I worked really hard as a kid and I worked really hard as an amateur and, uh, you know, coming out on tour, my mindset was only to win golf tournaments. And, you know, as you get older, things obviously change and, but injuries, you know, they do play a part of that. But, uh, like I said, I wish, you know, when I was a little younger, I would have said, Hey, way to go. Good job. You know, instead of say, why couldn't I win by five, you know, or something like that, you know, and be so hard on yourself. But, well, having said that, the fact that you will always be introduced as 2010 mm -hmm. U.S. Open, that, that means something, doesn't oh, it? Oh, for sure. I mean, I, I, it kind of it still gives me goosebumps thinking about it. Um, you know, I, the competitor in me wants me to have it so it's like 2020, you know, 2020, not 2010. I feel like that's a long time ago. You know, I want it now. Um, but at the same time, you got to take it, you know, day by day kind of thing. And like I said, my my second tournament back since after a long break and my expectations are very similar to at, at Oakmont. I don't really have any right now and I just want to get out there and play with no pain. Um, we're going to take a few from the WebEx. Any concerns about the thick rough with your past wrist injuries? Um, you know, I haven't, I'm not going to lie, I didn't sit there and hit 100 balls out of the rough to, to see what I could do. Um, I've probably hit about 10, 15 shots over the last several days. Um, you know, if it gets in there, I'm not going to try to be a hero, um, take what the, you know, it gives me. So, um, How important is it to you that your U.S. Open title came at Oakmont? In a way, how important is venue to the players? Venue is everything. Um, I, I, I believe that. I, I mean, winning at Oakmont is, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better place. I mean, obviously, being from the Bay Area, having my name on the trophy here would be just as special. But um, I think at the same time, if your name's on the trophy where the U.S. Open's at, you'll, you'll take it. <laughs> Ron? We've obviously talked a lot about the nostalgia of you coming home, mm -hmm. but so many players have talked about the difficulty of this course. Yeah. How, how much of an ask is this, given how long you've been out, given your injuries? I mean, this doesn't seem like the greatest place to, to try to back. find your game. <laughs> I mean, how, given that, I know you just mm -hmm. referred to your expectations, but given where you are in your comeback mm -hmm. and the, the challenge of this course, how does that sort of mesh? You know, my golf game's actually... It's it's really good right now. It's solid. It's consistent. Um, my biggest thing is just getting back to playing tournament golf. Uh, you know, I think people don't realize it's so much harder picking numbers, picking shots, you know, with your caddy, this and that, you know, being so precise. You know, I've been home playing the same golf course, you know, pretty much every day, and I know how far the ball flies. I can pick a target. And, you know, getting back into that routine, um, I think, is probably the is, is harder than actually playing. Um, so, like I said, I that part is rusty for me. My actual golf game is not rusty. Um, it's more of just the process of, of going about, you know, picking shots and, and executing them. And when you're, you know, seeing different angles around greens and things that you're so used to week in and week out, and I really haven't had that for, for quite a while. And that's where I think that, you know, the more tournaments I play, the better I'll get.
Last question. What does your playing schedule look like after this week? I'm going to play as a full schedule. I'm playing the next several events um, next week, um, you know, at, at Lake Merced and then Grand Rapids. Um, you know, I'll be, be playing quite a bit. So. Can I sneak in one oh, more? Yep. I know you talked about 98 Open, attending mm -hmm. with your parents. Mm -hmm. Do you have a specific memory of that? Do you remember <laughs> seeing a certain player or a hole? Or? It's funny. Actually, I remember my dad taking me to the merchandise shop and saying, okay, you can get whatever you want. I got an umbrella. That's your, <laughs> that is, that's your typical NorCal girl right there, knowing that she's going to need her umbrella to go play golf. And we still have the umbrella. It's crazy. It says stars and flag, or stars and stripes and uh, red, white, and blue with the Olympic Club on it. And that, I mean, it was bigger than me. You know, it was so heavy, but I, I wanted that umbrella, you know. <laughs> Good choice. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Paula. Good luck. All right. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks.